Welcome to Playboy Magazine, December 1976. We have our gala Christmas issue. Um, how's this for starters? Norman Mailer, Dick Gregory, Joyce Carol Oates, uh, Mario Puzo, Bruce J. Friedman, Robert Sheckley, um, Honey Bruce on Life with Lenny, an interview with O.J. Simpson, Sex Stars of 1976, the Playboy Music Poll, Fellini's wild new movie on Casanova and his conquests, and you can take it, a quiz to see if you're really sexually liberated, plus much more. So a big issue, 320 pages, um, we've got the Dodge Charger here of 77, got some Cutty Sark whiskey. We have some more cigarettes, these are the 120 millimeter cigarettes. More is longer and burns slower, so you can enjoy the smooth taste puff um, after. Sorry, enjoy the smooth taste puff after extra puff. And then we have some early times whiskey contents. I'll let you have a browse through. Most of it is covered on the front page. You've got Standing Up for Las Vegas with Mario Puzo, Sexual Congress by Peter Ross Range, of course, OJ Simpson in the Playboy interview, um, Gay Fiction by um, Joyce Carol Oates. A sardonic yarn about the misadventures of an eccentric homosexual professor. Um, first few pages we've got Sony and Wild Turkey and Dear Playboy. Uh, what have we got here? Bowie Ta uh, sorry, Bowie Ties. It was very refreshing to read your interview with David Bowie, Playboy September. But I'm afraid that falling from outer space on one's head does take its toll after a while. Um, we have the next page of letters. Bowie is the Muhammad Ali of rock, outrageous and pretentious, but with the greatest of style. Uh, Long jeans, watch there, the digital version. Bunny Debbie is a super reason to have a Playboy Club key. And I think it was last month or the month before we had the um, bunnies in a pictorial. Uh, we've got the Porsche 924. Hope you've had a good weekend so far. Um, I've got a, a rescheduled podcast coming up on Monday. It's been rescheduled twice, unfortunately. And then I have a, a Playboy photographer uh, coming onto the podcast on Wednesday, the 22nd as well. Uh, that'll be really interesting for all of you who appreciate the centerfolds as they started doing the photography from, I think, around 1978, 1979. Uh, but I'm going to explore that with him when he comes on. I won't disclose the name yet, but I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we've got Snakes Alive, uh, that's one of the features for this part. We've got music, um, what have we got mentioned in here? Let's have a quick look, not too much I think on my notes. And then we have Southern Comfort and the Olympus OM2. So we've got some uh, vinyl players. BSR, finally turntables worth building your whole system around. So I think a Salsa. Salsa Tequila. I've never actually heard of that one before. Uh, make this a golden Christmas with a genuine gold piece. It's interesting. We still have those gold kind of sales things today. One of those kind of mail order type things or you can buy them on TV now. Lots of adverts for buying gold and having it held in a a gold repository for you somewhere. Lots of things like that. Triumph TR7 Victory Edition. Free spoker wheels. Free vinyl roof. Free racing stripes. Uh, I've got movies. Um, anything stand out for me here? Just having a quick look. I don't think there was too much. More Woody Allen films. Uh, Vivitar System 35. And then we've got Duran Bury there. Actually quite a nice Christmas image, probably the wrong time of the year to be actually talking about it, but um, it's actually a quite nice Christmas scene. Reminds me of the old Christmas cards. Um, we have uh, another sort of centrefold advertising the magazine subscriptions. Obviously, of course, because the Christmas issue is the, the Christmas gala issue, we have a lot of adverts. So expect that every year, but in particular for this month. Uh, black and white Buchanan's blended scotch whiskey x-rated um, got some more films through the looking glass is the latest landmark movie to display beaver as if it were raunch mink proving again that hardcore can be handled with class Dell's paperback prose version of looking glass describes it with reasonable accuracy as a seething novel of supernatural sex the demonic tale bears absolutely um, 
no resemblance to Lewis Carroll's children's classic Beyond Your Title. It's mainly a psychological thriller, a study of obsessive narcissism, uh, accused on the face um, figure figure and psyche of a rich, beautiful young woman whose sensual wonderland lies behind a mirror in a murky attic room. So we've got more on sex there. The Joy of Letting Go is another one. Books, uh, what have we got here? Got Capote on Capote, and this is Truman Capote. So Truman Capote has been called many things from literary uh, gadfly to serious writer and his long-awaited novel and answered prayers isn't going to set the record straight if the reaction to the three chapters preview in Esquire is any indication of what's to come. Black Velvet, nice model for that um, advert there. Really nice looking. Polaroid cameras. We've got some RAM, we've got Vivitar, cost stereo phones as well. How to influence people. Panasonic, Panasonic introduces CB, FM, AM, FM stereo, and more room for your knees. And uh, this is new, ET mags. There's more to driving than just getting there. Bolt on a set of ET mags. They'll do more to help you escape from the commonplace than anything else on your car. Check ET's new radio wire shown above. So I guess, is ET the actual, the centerpiece or is it the wheels? I guess it's the wheels. Um, actually quite looking, sort of wide, wide rim there. But I've never heard of ET mags before. Selected shorts, Goodbye Joey Ernst by Edgar Smith. And to tell the truth by Thomas Plate. What else have we got? The satin sheets is back. Playboy advisor. My creative writing teacher used to tell me, sorry, used to tell his students uh, to write about what they know. Well, I watch a lot of television and have, have, and have come to know the various characters quite well. I'm curious, how does one go about submitting a screenplay to a given show? Um, it says television producers are reluctant to look at unsolicited scripts from unknown writers. In order to avoid plagiarism suits, they often return manuscripts unopened. Something I've experienced in the past as well, and something I'm actually looking at now. I've got an idea for a book, and I'm trying to look at literary agents before submitting them, as I think most publishers don't really want to be reading anything where there's not an agent involved. But I'm looking at that at the moment. Um, it says here, alas, I have contacted a herpes type 2 infection. The doctors I visited just shrug their shoulders and give me antibiotics to prevent infections when the blisters that form on my genitals ulcerate. I've heard of a vaccine for this disease. Can you fill me in? It says research is just beginning on herpes so far. There is no surefire cure. The vaccine approach has not been considered successful. The virus that causes uh, herpetic infections resides in genitalia, also ganglia at the base of the spine, safely out, safely out of reach of any antibodies that would be produced by a vaccine. Antibodies travel through the bloodstream, herpes via the nerve cells. Uh, something I never knew. Uh, my boyfriend plays the piano and sings rather well. I would like to preserve some of his performances on tape. The problem is that I can't seem to get a straight answer on what type of microphone to use. One person told me to use a directional mic for vocals and an omnidirectional mic for the keyboards. Later, I was told that only directional mic should be used. What type should I use? Microphones are uh, to tape recorders. What lenses are to cameras? There are specific mics for specific effects, as well as all-round tools for the amateur. Amateur Nixon. The standard microphone recommended for home recording is the low impotence dynamic microphone with a cardioid pattern. Uh, the mic picks up sound mainly in front, but also grabs some sound from the sides and rear. So we've got the Playboy Forum. Uh, what do we have here? More parts on Nixon's legacy. We've got the Forum News Front. Trip for a trip, a 34-year-old governess uh, employed by a suburban Chicago family has been charged with paying for her cab rides with marijuana. According to police, she ran household errands by taxi, paid drivers with bags of pot and gave them joints as tips. Not bad if you're into it, I guess. Um, Motorola. What else do we have? Um... Puritan Press, opinion by 
Al Goldstein. Freedom of expression is getting a royal fucking in the courts of the nation, but you'd never notice it from reading the papers. As editor and publisher of Screw, I was convicted in July, sorry, last July in Wichita, Kansas, on 12 counts of conspiring to use the mails to distribute obscene material, i.e. the Screw. The indictment was public knowledge for over a year. The trial lasted four weeks. Although there were a few stories in the local papers and several items in Playboy, there was almost no coverage of the event by the national press, even though issues the issues raised were crucial to journalistic freedom and as obvious as a public as a pubic hair sticking out of a DA's nose. The case was a travesty of justice built on entrapment, the narrow community standards definition of obscenity, and the contestable use of federal conspiracy laws. So again, we have... Um, examples of publications being censored or people attempting to censor them just as they did with playboy with the u.s postal service who uh, tried to ban the delivering of the magazine but who had to take them to court and managed to overturn that uh, i've got some joy per, um, perfume there we have playboy interview oj simpson a candid conversation with the best liked best paid football player ever um I've always had a very simple question. Uh, what's bigger, the NFL's bylaws or the US Constitution? The Constitu Constitution says we're all free to choose how and where we want to earn a thing. Uh, that business ab uh, about leaving Buffalo is behind me now. I intend to finish out my career with the uh, the Bulls. Sorry, the Bills. But I'll tell you this. I think the Bills would have been better if they'd made a trade for me. I never infringed on people. I was just like Clint Eastwood. I only beat up dudes who deserved it. Usually on Friday or Saturday night. If there wasn't a fight, it wasn't no weekend. So that's an interesting uh, interview with OJ Simpson. Obviously, everyone knows what he went on to do. And I think he's kind of back on social media now, just as normal, sort of going to play golf and doing various things. And sort of no one kind of bats an eyelid anymore. But um, that's just the way with everything, I think any kind of new cycle, whatever it may be, whatever is important is suddenly gone within a month. These things just disappear out of the news cycle. Um, introducing the successor, introducing the successor to the car that started a cult, and this is the BMW. Nice looking car. This is kind of like the, you can see the rally version at the top there. Ray Charles's 44 passenger Viscount has the best sound in car stereo. Uh, what else do we have? We've got Enter Newport's Pleasure um, on wheels sweepstakes win a 1977 Chevy fan plus $5,000 for customizing. Um, I've never actually seen one of these Chevy vans actually looking quite normal, not here in the UK anyway. Generally, if we have them in the UK, we see them like this with the wider wheels, all of the accessories, and sometimes it does have these kind of um, artworks on the side, this airbrushing. But um, I think there's a, a big kind of, um, not market for them, but people love to have them. You get people here in the UK who collect US cars, and they all seem to be the same kind, same kind of people. They normally have a muscle car, then they have like a, a big um, kind of pickup or one of these vans. Uh, come see Jamaica. This is Playboy Resort at Ochos Rios. And we've got Acme Shoes there. Bell and Howe. Uh, Datsun Saves. Another one of the cars all about miles per gallon in this era. Uh, so we've got AMC. And we've got the Bolex Super 8 Sound. Uh, Hollywood in hand. Introducing the Strawberry Margarita. This is the club. And we've got Camel. A fiction by Joyce Carol Oates. And this is entitled Gay. The first murder of the new year always draws more publicity than any of the ordinary routine murders that follow. And Joyce Carol Oates recently um, had her book on... It was kind of a, a fictionalised version of Marilyn Monroe's life but it was recently converted into a film and I think it's been on Netflix I think it got mixed kind of reviews I think a lot of people thought it was um, completely factual uh, about Marilyn Monroe and they were kind of online um, talking about how she was treated we know she was treated badly but in the fictional version it was even worse so um, people don't quite understand that John Dempsey cartoon there and Merry Christmas from the Colonel uh, Dick Gregory with James R. McGraw in which Mr. Gregory 
talks turkey with some high-level friends and brings off an airlift to Mississippi. Portfolio, Pompeo Passar, highlights of a Playboy Lensman's 16-year love affair with the ladies. So we see his name so much in, in Playboy, so many pictorials that he's done. And then we have uh, Passar created November 1965, striking James Bond cover by placing model Beth Hyatt by a bucket of dry ice, backlit by a strobe and from the front by a floodlight. So some more photos here. It's a nice, pic, nice set of photos actually for, for him, but it's been, he doesn't really have any kind of bad photos. Yeah, some uh, nice ones here. Now playing The Trial of the Warlock, screenplay by, screenplay by Norman Mailer. Uh, it says here, I just missed this bit. America's foremost writer adapts J.K. Heisman's satanic classic La Basse for the screen. So, of course, some quite satanic artwork there. A cartoon. I think that's by Don Madden. Yep. The bizarre excesses of history's most notorious swordsmen are brilliantly caught on film in Federico Fellini's Casanova. So, kind of a backstage set of photographs here. And then we have Raymond cartoon caption. And to think when you asked me back to your place to eat organic, I thought you were some kind of health nut. Uh, are you sexually liberated enough to make it with more than one person or species at the same time? And if not, why not? Or what did you do during the sexual revolution, daddy? Quiz by Barbara Nellis and James R. Peterson. Working out, article by Bruce J. Friedman. Sometimes even a man who works out faithfully has to live with his love handles. Playboy's Christmas cards by, or uh, well, the verses by Judith Wax. Obviously the artwork by Dadini on a couple of these. And then our Playmate of the Month, photography by Philip Dixon. Alone waiting for the train that will take her to points west. Karen indulges in a fleeting fantasy. The romance of the old 20th century limited. Scenery out of Thomas Wolfe flickering by. And possibly even a quick zipless encounter. Uh, shades of Jung and Yong. Making tracks. Playmate Karen Hafter thinks air travel is for the birds. So when she made the move from New York to California, she kept a low profile. So again, nice looking Playmate. Really striking, I think, photos for this one. Yeah, some quite provocative photos, I think, for this particular section. Really nice, though. Like the kind of darkness in some of these photos. There's a bit more, like, contrast in them rather than, like, the kind of the light backgrounds that we have. This one's uh, a bit darker. I like the black and white section in particular. Playboy's party jokes. Then we have Roland B. Wilson. Uh, naturally, we assumed we would be battling the New York Islanders. All the president's women. Playboy's chief executive scoreboard sorts out the straight and the strayed. Playboy's Christmas gift guide. Exceptional goodies that make giving and getting a your delight. Excuse me, some quite expensive items in here this month. We've got a speedboat here. Uh, or is that a jet ski? Um, a bubble deck jet ski boat that's powered by a 455 CU um, engine. Uh, can tow three skiers at once. $6,400 including trailer. Plus an additional $500 for the optional custom paint job. So... How many people are actually getting these gifts? I do not know. What is life? He knew that if he answered correctly, <coughs> excuse me, correctly, instant guruhood was only a few steps away. This is fiction by Robert Sheckley. She was a stripper who had been around, but it took a woman, but it took a woman to first turn her on, and Lenny Bruce to show her what love was really about. From the new book Honey Bruce by Dana Benenson. Um, we've got Attire by David Platt, Party Favourites. Some quite sort of fun photography going on here. A little bit different. Uh, 
Sexual Congress, uh, article by Peter Ross Range. Wayne and Liz went up the hill to find a little nookie. Wayne fell down and broke his crown on Liz. She wrote a bookie. If you can't get laid in Washington, you can't get laid. And this is anonymous. Standing Up for Las Vegas by Mario Puzo. The author of God the Godfather argues that gambling is as good for the soul as it is bad for the old savings account. Sex Stars of 1976. Bowie is back again. We've got Sylvester Stallone being mentioned on here. Who else have we got? You'll recognise some of these. Burt Reynolds, uh, James Kahn. Who else have we got as well? Top right, we've got uh, Margot Hemingway. Bottom right is ex-Playboy Bunny uh, Lauren Hutton. And who is the other one? I think that's it there. So uh, some interesting photographs. Robert De Niro at the bottom there. Slightly longer pictorial as well for this month. They can see um, Sylvester Stallone in the bottom right. Alberto Vargas, a caption you can afford to go, ho, 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 yours is a pillow. The play 1977 Playboy music poll. Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus and he's a dirty old man. This is a collection of cartoons. You've got folks, Buck Brown, uh, Raymond, who else? Buck, yeah, another Buck Brown one. So a little selection there. When Ragtops Were in Flower, article by Brock Yates. Once upon a time, there were big, beautiful open cars that said you had money and pizzazz. Those were the good old days. I think most of these are like Daimler's, Rolls Royce, Bugatti 41 Royal. We had some of these pictorials like this back in the 50s, if you remember, uh, focusing on these old cars and the, the kind of old look. The Indiscreet, sorry, yeah, The Indiscreet Jewels from Les Bougeaux Indiscreet by Dennis Diderot, 1748. This is the Ribold Classic. You remember that these are kind of translated novels from that time. Little Annie Fanny returns as well. Got Quasar TV. The shower massage. Give the real shower massage by Waterpick. Or they might think you are not the real Santa. Cartoon there by Snade. He offered me a big juicy part once, but it wasn't in a movie. Cool cigarettes. We've got Janssen clothing there. Some more wordplay by Robert Carolla. And Levi's. So we'll be heading into 1977 for our next issue that's coming up. I haven't looked at any of 1977, I don't think. Um, I sometimes pick out an odd magazine from you know, quite far ahead if something comes up, if someone passes away who's been in Playboy, I'll go and look at that issue. But 1977 is going to be a completely new um, era for me. Don't know much about the magazines from from that time, so looking forward to that. Caption on this cartoon is, Thanks Hamlet, You Are a Prince, and this is by uh, B. Clyban. The well-dressed man, so what the well-dressed man is wearing, Pierre Cardin men's cologne. And then we've got a golden opportunity to own a Nikon. Let me know what you think of this particular issue. There's a lot of adverts. Some of the features are good. I think the OJ Simpson interview is kind of, it's, it's okay for the time, but obviously it's better now knowing what we know about OJ Simpson. It's something that you can kind of look back on. Um, it almost feels kind of like a bit of a novelty to be able to go back and read what these people were saying uh, and thinking about in this time. Gain Wilson, the cartoon here. I'm just not sure the general public is ready for this, Foster. And we've got some more bits about pleasing women. We've got some 
hair solutions there, Tarayton cigarettes as well. Morant plays Buckingham Palace. Bottom right corner, Dadini cartoon. Mr. Munt uh, has a conspiracy theory about Christmas. And some more brute there. Stress tabs. And some other ads. The egghead smell off. I think in a way these kind of garlic issues, although they're so big, they're kind of my least favourite issues for some reason. Uh, they just, I think because they're so big, I think they just cram so much in that you kind of don't get anything that stands out in a way. I mean, we had some nice pictorials. I think that's probably the best thing for this month. It, it, actually, the centrefold is very nice. I like the photography on that. Um, cartoon here, and this is by um, just check folks, and it's JB's Just a Child at Heart. All he really enjoys is unwrapping the gifts. Technics there, Playboy Pop Puree. Treat yourself to uh, light menthol uh, Bel Air. The first TAC for less than two hundred dollars. Got Dolomite for skiing. Guess it's that season. Ericsson cartoon. Caption, is that how you get off, Marion? Making it with a Sunday Times crossword puzzle. Uh, we've got more radios. Stimula, the ribbed male contraceptive. Gordon's distilled London dry gin. We've got a Smilby cartoon. Not a creature was stirring is the caption. Playboy Book Club. John Dempsey cartoon. Caption, we're going to exchange our presence out here. Miss Worthington. And we've got the calendar. Playboy's photo contest. Playboy on the scene as well. Fashion and some gadgets. And then Grapevine, we've got uh, Jeff Tornberg. We have uh, Jerry Orzoff and Rich Melman. Joseph Papp, we've got George Benson and Norman Asif. Travel. Uh, Toronto's onto something. We've got Sex Cetera, um, Lolita Leg Legalistics, uh, The Joys of Ginseng. So there's a piece here on this Lolita Legalistics. How many times have you held yourself back from lusting after an alluring lass of sweet, not yet 16, because you were afraid of the legal consequences? Well, like everything else concerning sex, the laws governing the age of consent may be in for re-evaluation. Judge Neil McKinnon of London's Old Bailey says that to brand a man as a criminal merely because of age seems to be wrong. Explaining his lenient decision in the trial of a young man of 22 who had sexual intercourse with a girl, a wooden girl of 15, the judge called for maturity and not age to be considered in sex cases involving girls under 16. If the laws are eventually rewritten in Great Britain, they may well affect comparable statutes here in the US, which I don't think has ever changed. And I think everything's kind of pretty strict around the 16 age. I don't think anybody dares take it any younger than that. And I think it would probably be a mistake to do so. For various reasons, I think, particularly in this age that we live in now. But um, let's just take a look at the next issue. Uh, Erica Young, The Rolls Royce Love Affair. The Motel Takes by Mike McGrady. Join Jimmy Breslin uh, as well. We've got Dick Tuck. Ark Buckwold returns. Evan Hunter. Dan Greenberg. Um, so, yeah, we've got lots coming up for the new year, which I'm looking forward to. So I'm going to go and start reading those. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Any questions or comments, please leave them below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to be kept up to date with all the new videos and the two podcasts coming out on the 20th and 22nd um, of February. I'll see you all soon.